Hi, in this video, we're going to look at the example from chapter nine on customer lifetime value. Now, we've already done all of the analysis we need to do uh, to be able to calculate customer lifetime value. So this example, we don't need to use R, we'll go straight to Tableau and create the measures, uh, calculate customer lifetime value, and then visualize it to see the different customer lifetime values of the customers in our data. So we're gonna go ahead and start by going into Tableau. Now, in this case, we just need to take the results of our logistic regression application, uh, our exercise from chapter eight, so we're going to open, in this case, the logit underscore pred file that we created from chapter eight. And we'll see here that it includes all of the customers and, and some of the variables that from, from the logistic regression um, and our predicted probability uh, that that customer purchased. So let's go ahead and start in sheet one. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is create several calculated fields in order to be able to create our um, calculation of customer lifetime value. The first calculated field we're going to create, so in this case, we can go to analysis, create calculated field, is going to be called margin, right? Margin is going to be um, the expected amount of uh, profit that we're going to get from these customers uh, going forward, right? Now, in this case, I'm just going to use from the chapter, the different definitions, the, the Tableau uh, code that we put in the chapter. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it from the chapter um, to save some time. So here we have essentially the total revenue over that three-year time period um, divided by 36 months to get us the average monthly revenue and multiply that times our average margin, um, which is 52%. Um, and this, uh, and then uh, subtract off of that, uh, in this case, um, the average spending per month, where we said that on average, we spend about a dollar per month marketing to this customer. So this will get us our short-term margin that'll be part of our customer lifetime value equation. The second calculated field we're going to create is going to be our one for our discount rates. We'll call this discount. And in this case, our discount rate, we just need to take our annual discount rate of 10% and convert it into a monthly discount rate. In this case, to do that, we just take one plus the 10%, so 1.1 raised to the 1 12th power so that we turn, turn it into a monthly rate uh, and then subtract back off that one on the end to get our compounded monthly discount rate. Uh, the third calculated field we need to create to, to calculate CLV, we have the prediction or the predict um, measure in our data already, which is the likelihood someone's going to buy during the campaign. We could also treat CLV in a traditional sense by looking at the likelihood that someone is still active given their purchase history. So we're gonna create a measure called P Alive, which will measure given the, in this case, we're going to look at the recency and the frequency of a given customer in the past. What is the likelihood they're still around? And then we can calculate CLV either using the probability they're going to buy during our campaign or we can treat retention as a measure of the probability they're still active based on their recency and their frequency. Now, P alive, the way we, we calculate that is going to be, so 1,095 is uh, 365 days in a year times three years. Um, we're going to say, so this, this represents the time, um, you know, since the beginning until your, your last purchase divided by the total time. And that's raised to the frequency or essentially how many times you've purchased power. And this will give us our measure of uh, P alive. All right, so now that we have these measures, we can actually create CLV or we can calculate CLV and we'll calculate two different CLVs. So the first CLV we're going to calculate. So we're gonna create a calculated field called CLV and we can use that P alive measure we just created. 
So in this case, if you remember, CLV is just the short-term margin, right? So uh, in, in that case, we have the short-term margin and it's multiplied times one plus D divided by one plus D minus R, R being retention rate. So in this case, we have our short-term margin, which we calculated just now. We have the discount rate, which we also just calculated. Uh, that's the monthly compounded monthly rate for a 10% annual. And we have the PLI that we just calculated. Okay. So that will be our customer's CLV based on PLI. We can also create a calculated field for CLV uh, using the predict from our logistic regression. So in this case, the predict measure is going to be the substituted where we had PLI. So we still have the short-term margin times one plus discount divided by one plus discount minus probability of purchase. So now we have the measures uh, of CLV using both P alive and the predicted probabilities. And we can go ahead and see at the customer level how they compare to each other, All right? So the first step we're going to do is we're just gonna click on customer ID. We'll double click on customer ID and you'll see that it brings it up so that it allows us to now have columns of data uh, about each of our customers. So one we might want to put in, if we double click on P Alive, we'll see that show up here. We can double click on CLV of Predict, we'll see that show up here. Now, a few things to notice. Uh, one is it's just rounding off the number, right? So one thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, change the format. So if we click uh, on this measure value, we can change, we can choose format. And we can tell it that CLV should actually be uh, in currency. And you'll see that that changed it. We can also then click, the, click on the CLV, the other CLV here, and again, change that to currency, All right? So now we have uh, a measure of the dollars uh, in, in net present value of future expected profitability. Um, we can make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. So let's go ahead and click up here, format, font, and choose, let's say 16 is our font. Makes it a little bit bigger for us. We'll go ahead and uh, drag these to the right to, to be able to see the different values, right? So now you can see the differences. They're pretty similar. In some instances, you see the CLV prediction is a little bit higher when we use CLV uh, predicted probability. Um, and in some instances, you see here for this customer, CLV was a little was higher for the case of PLI. So let's go ahead and title this. Uh, in this case, we're going to say CLV calculations for each customer. All right, so now we have a table. Uh, of the CLV values by customer uh, for using both of the different measures of CLV that we've created, right? The next thing we could do is we could actually aggregate this up. It's very common to look at things like decile charts to see, sort of see how we have a distribution of CLVs of different customers. So we'll go ahead and open a new sheet to create our decile chart. We're gonna need to create a, a two calculated fields for this. One will be the decile chart for the PLI CLVs, and one will be the decile chart for the predict CLVs. So we'll go ahead and, and create our first calculated field. So we'll call this uh, deciles PLI. Now in this case, um, we need to uh, check to see if the numbers are in different percentile buckets, right? So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and copy over all of the code here because it's going to be a bunch of if statements. We're going to say here that if it's less than 10 percentile, put it in one bucket, goes in the 10 percent bucket and so on all the way up to the 90 percent bucket. Otherwise, put it in the 100 percent bucket. Right. So that's going to give us the check to see if the different P lives are in these different percentile levels. Say OK to that. We're next going to create the same thing for, so deciles predict, go ahead and get 
this from the book. We're going to copy over same thing, if statement, and we're going to check to see if the value is uh, in the 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to the 100th percentile. Say OK. So now we have these two uh, uh, decile uh, calculations that will sort of help us see the total. So what we want to do now is we want to actually see the CLVs of these different deciles that we've created, right? So uh, the first one we'll look at is the PLI version. So we'll go ahead and just double click PLI. You'll see it show up here. This is the sum. Uh, for the decile chart, we usually like to look as, at averages. So we're gonna go ahead and change this measure from sum to average, right? The second thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, move the decile P alive to columns. So now you can see that it's grouped the different people together based on which percentile bucket they're in from the 10th percentile to the 100th percentile. Uh, next thing we do, if we wanna fill up the screen with this, so it's a little easier to see, we can change it from the standard view to entire. And finally, if we, uh, second to last, let's say, if we wanna add the actual values here, we can take the CLV of the PLIs and we can put it in the marks label and it'll actually put the labels here. Now, again, it's gonna assume sum. So let's go ahead and change that to average. Second, it's not thinking that it's, that it's a dollar amount. So we can go ahead and also say format. In this case, we're gonna change it from a number to a currency, right? So now we can actually see the different CLVs. And lastly, we'll go ahead and title the sheet um, decile chart using P plot. All right, so the few things you can see from this chart, one, you'll see that there is a lot of distributional differences, right? So in our top CLV, uh, decile, you'll see that they average about $67 in, in CLV. Um, the second and the third, still okay. We'll call these sort of uh, maybe even here medium CLV. And then you start to see it get close to zero. And in fact, we have a couple deciles where we have customers that are negative CLV. They're costing us more um, than we actually earn in profitability, right? So this may help us think about how to manage these different customers segments, in this case, deciles, based on our CLV analysis. Now, like I mentioned, we have CLV for P Alive. We can replicate this analysis. So if we click on another sheet, we can go ahead and do the same thing for the CLV using predict. So let's go ahead and bring CLV predict over here. By double clicking, we'll change it to the average, just like we did before. Let's bring the deciles over to columns here, right? Then let's go ahead and make it the entire view. Let's add the values. So we'll drag CLV predict to label. We need to change it to average. We also want to format it so it's currency. And lastly, we again want to change the, the title here. We're going to call this decile chart using predict. And we see somewhat of a similar result. Again, we have a high CLV group over here. We sort of have a medium CLV group in this area. And again, we have some negative CLVs coming from, from uh, the bottom deciles here. So, so again, this is very useful for us because we see a lot of heterogeneity in our customers. There's some high value ones, there's some medium value ones, and there's some ones that are uh, actually little to no even negative value that, that we might wanna make different decisions about for customer selection, as well as uh, optimal resource allocation. So last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and save this file. Again, we're gonna save it as a Tableau packaged workbook so that the data is included. And we'll go ahead and name this file, customer lifetime value. So in this example, you got to see how we take the results uh, from our logistic regression and we can use the predicted value from logistic regression 
uh, as one way to measure retention. Are you going to buy during this next campaign? We could also create our own value using something like PLive to look at the likelihood that you're still a customer uh, in that case. And we showed how we can create, uh, you can either look at individual level CLVs or we can look at, in this case, deciles uh, of CLVs to help us with better understanding the value of our customer base and the distribution of the value of our customer base. 